Hi, I'm State Health Officer Dr. Maxine Hayes. I'm also a pediatrician and a parent. Thank you for your interest in learning more about the benefits of immunizations. As parents, we make many important decisions about our children's health. Many parents have never seen the terrible diseases that vaccines prevent because vaccines have worked so well. Unfortunately, a growing number of families choose to skip or delay vaccines, and we've seen disease outbreaks go up as a result. I hope this video will encourage you to talk with your child's health care provider and with your friends and family about the benefits of immunizations. It's the healthy choice I'd like everyone to make. Together, we can continue to make Washington State a safe and healthy place for all. It was me who had given Caroline my baby pertussis or whooping cough and it was devastating. It's just frustrating every year to see several children who have died from something like influenza or whooping cough uh, when they didn't need to. If we don't immunize our children, if we don't continue to have high rates of immunization, we are going to see these diseases again. These diseases are being kept at bay by people being immunized. But these diseases are, for the most part, only a plane ride away. For decades, most of us have made the effort to get our shots. Everything from annual flu shots and tetanus boosters to immunizations against polio, childhood meningitis, smallpox, and other devastating diseases. But in the last few years, a growing number of Americans are choosing not to get vaccinated. In fact, Washington State may well be leading the nation in this anti-vaccine movement. Some parents now seem convinced that getting a shot is a greater risk to their children than getting the diseases the vaccines prevent. As the debate grows, many young parents just aren't sure about the risks, about whom to trust, about how to do best by their children. Just five days before I was due to have her, um, I started a cough that was kind of started like dry, nagging, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing to even be alarmed about. I had no cold symptoms. And then my daughter was born on her due date. And about two weeks after she was born, she developed a cough and kind of choking, gagging. A few days later, we were having dinner with my family and Caroline started one of these coughing episodes and turning blue and my sister-in-law, you know, she said to me, I don't mean to alarm you, but we need to head to children's ER right away. And when the infectious disease team came in to our room to do the consult, they looked at me and they just said, you know, who in your family has been sick or coughing? And I said, oh my God, I have. It was at that moment that it hit me like a ton of bricks that it was me who had given Caroline my baby pertussis or whooping cough and it was devastating. Babies, particularly babies in the first three months of life, can die from whooping cough. I've taken care of them, it's awful. You can't breathe for them. <coughs> they have a spasm and they can't stop. They cough, 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 turn blue, look like they're choking, often vomit, and it can go on and on and on and on. It's terrifying, actually, to watch. We were at Children's Hospital in Seattle for a total of 23 days, um, six of which were in the NICU, the infant intensive care. I was scared, and there was a tremendous amount of guilt. Doctors and public health watchdogs see Caroline's case as part of an unsettling resurgence in this disease and others. 
They also point out that just a hundred years ago, a world with few and primitive vaccines was a much more hostile place for families and entire communities. Before we had vaccines, you'd see devastating epidemics like polio and influenza, whooping cough or measles. Smallpox was a horrible disease that accounted for thousands and thousands of deaths worldwide. Basically, humans and germs fight battles, and um, because the germs reproduce more rapidly, they historically have tended to win. What vaccines do is they short circuit that, and they basically put into your body what that outer coat of that germ looks like. So in advance, your body can develop those antibodies, those chemicals to recognize it. As a consequence, when the germ first gets into your body after you've been vaccinated, your body immediately recognizes it and kills it before it can cause an infection. Once the power of vaccines became clear, public health agencies, physicians, governments, even the public schools worked relentlessly and the numbers of people vaccinated against preventable diseases rose continuously. That was the good news, and it stayed good until just the last few years, as a new generation of parents grew uncertain about immunization's benefits or even opposed vaccinations outright. I am worried about what's happening in this community as far as the vaccination rates continuing to drop and us being at the very bottom level of protection. I was just gonna do the, the flowers like down to where it's... Selena Yarkin and her family have a five acre organic farm on Vashon Island, a community that has emerged as a center of parental hesitancy about vaccinations. Nearly one in five children at Chautauqua Elementary School remain unvaccinated. I feel like if we're not at risk of disease outbreak now, we could be soon if we don't reverse the trend. Communities may not see an outbreak for a year or a decade, but sooner or later, we will reap what we have sown. There will be outbreaks. Midway through his sophomore year at Ellensburg High, Hawken Larson, a star athlete, started to cough. He didn't know it then, but he'd caught whooping cough from classmates who'd just returned from the state wrestling tournament in Grace Harbor. That was Tuesday, and by Wednesday, I came down with a cough, and uh, my husband Derek came down with a cough. We were immediately quarantined for five days by the epidemiologist and public health. And then for the next three months, um, Hawken was, was really ill. Watching their son struggle with whooping cough frightened Brenda and Derek. But the social implications of this serious medical condition were also significant. Both hold positions of responsibility in their community. Derek is the principal of Kittitas Elementary School and Brenda is the county fire marshal. I was very embarrassed, but I was also very stressed. Um, I am the fire marshal. Um, public safety is, is one of my main concerns. You're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to be somebody who sets an example for people. I had no idea that missing one immunization, one booster shot, uh, could wreak such havoc on our family um, and our community. The Larsons were three of about 25 people in Kittitas to whom whooping cough quickly spread. The state health department saw it as a serious outbreak verging on an epidemic. To prevent fast spreading outbreaks such as this one, communities must rely on one of the key principles of immunization theory. If you can get enough individuals within a community to be protected against the disease, then what you've effectively done is decrease the chances that if one of those unprotected people gets the disease, they won't bump into somebody else who's also susceptible to the disease. You now have the community protected. Your child sits in a classroom with 29 other children, 27 of whom have been immunized, and fortunately that lowers the risk that anybody's going to be carrying a disease that your child can get. Vaccinations not only protect the individual, but through community immunity, they help to protect vulnerable members of our society, including those with damaged immune systems, like cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. 
An infant, such as baby Caroline, cannot be vaccinated against whooping cough until they're eight weeks old. What's that one? Fortunately for Caroline and her family, the outcome, after spending nearly a month in the hospital, has been good. As life returns to normal, Heidi has been reflecting on how this happened to her family. I thought whooping cough and, you know, polio and all of these things that were immunized against w had gone away. And I think that's why a lot, of, a lot of mothers and young families are choosing not to vaccinate is because they've never experienced them firsthand and they don't understand that the reason they've gone away is because we've been immunized. Parents today are worried about the things they see as threats to their children. And these vaccine preventable diseases are just not part of their experience growing up. So people don't realize how serious, how deadly those diseases can be, but they are still around. And we do see in Washington state a movement to talk about the risks of vaccination rather than talking about the benefits of vaccination. And so we have a, a number of unimmunized children. As the numbers of unvaccinated children rise, the risks increase for these children and for others around them. One elementary school teacher in Seattle says what many in her position feel. I have a real concern that these parents who are choosing to opt out of immunizations, they're not only putting their own children at risk, but they're putting the whole population at risk. Our school, the other children in the school, but me as well and my colleagues, and, and that really worries me. There are lots of loud voices and, and it can be difficult for people to know which voices they actually can trust and which voices they can believe and which voices are actually saying things uh, that have some scientific validity to them. What concerns me about the misinformation that's put out by the anti-vaccination sites is that it seeds doubt in parents' minds about the vaccinations. And it's a very hard thing to dispel once it's been out there. So misinformation about vaccines and scare tactics, I think is incredibly dangerous to, to new families. This is a story that there really are not two equal sides to. We have looked and looked and looked for the bad side of vaccinations. We have not found it. And lots of research, lots of study has gone into that. I feel compelled to tell other mothers the importance of getting these vaccinations against these preventable illnesses because I do not want any other mother to have to, to witness what I saw when my child was turning blue, fighting for her life because of a disease that's preventable by vaccination. The decision to vaccinate is not just an individual decision, it's a decision that when you choose to vaccinate or to not vaccinate, it has community-wide implications. Parents want to do what's right for their child. So my <laughs> hope is that by providing people with good information, enough people will make the right choices that are both good for them and good for the community. Thank you.